All right, come on, church. Let's give the Lord a big, big, big hand clap of praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hey, church, guess what? It's Vision Sunday 2024 here at Ascension Live. And you know what? I am excited. Actually, I'm super excited about what God has in store for Ascension Life Church this year. And not just for Ascension Life Church, but for the church at large. And you know what? And for each and every one of you individually. Come on. Now, that's worth, that's worth a hand clap of praise this morning. You know, think about it this way. Did you know this? That it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hey, I'm just quoting Scripture. That it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Now, think about that for a second. What's the kingdom? The kingdom, according to Paul the Apostle, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, Tim. There's your King James. Joy in the Holy Ghost. For those of you who don't use the King James, that's joy in the Holy Spirit, okay? Somebody's like, ghosts? See, that's how far, you know... 30, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, that was nothing to hear Holy Ghost. But, you know, I mean, modern translations and so forth, now we use the word spirit. But seriously, the kingdom is righteousness, which is right standing in God and with God. It's righteousness. It's peace. That means, hey, it's God's good pleasure to give us peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, and then joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, I was reading in the, um, the Passion Translation, and I love this. In the Passion Translation, Paul, Paul the Apostle says that we're supposed to uh, feast on the joy of the Lord. Now, think about that for a second. We're supposed to feast. Everybody say feast. feast. See, I'm a feaster, not a faster. I'm all, you know, hey, I, I love it that, you know, that we're, so, that we're focused on the, the grace message here, the goodness of God message, the love of God. And I know that a lot of churches right now are in that mode. It's, you know, it's fasting, whether it's seven days 21 days, 40 days, it's all about fasting right now. But you know what? I'm not going into 2024 with this somber and kind of like, oh, woe is me kind of mentality. I'm going into 2024 with victory, faith and victory. Somebody say amen this morning. So it is. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But you know what else? It's not just righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hey, it's casting out demons. It's healing the sick. It's raising the dead. Did Jesus say that if, if, if the demons are being cast out and people are being healed, doesn't that mean that the kingdom of God has come upon you? Hey, and that's the season that we're in. In fact, we've been in it for 2,000 years. The problem is the church hasn't believed it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not the case here at Ascension Life. But let me give you another verse of scripture that God is just speaking to me right now. And that is this. It's 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. And it's this, that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus through us. Everybody say all. all. It does, he didn't say some. Paul doesn't say some of the promises of God are yes and amen. He says all of the promises of God are yes and amen. Do you believe that this morning? Well, you know, the problem, the reason that we don't get all excited about that is because, sadly speaking, the church as a whole, we've not preached the promises of God. We've not focused on the promises of God. And I can tell you right now, going into 2024, this is the vision statement for Ascension Life Church in 2024, and that's this, preaching the gospel of grace, standing on the promises of God. Preaching the gospel of grace, which is favor, and standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. And I can promise you this, as we go into 2024, we're going to focus on grace. We're going to focus on the goodness of God. We're going to talk about the promises of God. And you know what? And we're going to learn how to walk in that and how to live it. Listen to this. It, you know, I said earlier, it's the Father's good pleasure to, to give us the kingdom. You know what else it is? It's the Father's good pleasure to bless us. Amen. In fact, did you know this? That we're already blessed? And not only are we already blessed, we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Come on, somebody say amen this morning. <laughs> Ephesians 1.3 says we're blessed with every, not just some, we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And you know what? 
And it's sad that a good, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to step on a limb and say probably a good majority of the church that we don't even know this. We don't understand this. We don't even see this. And if you don't know it, you don't understand it, and you don't see it, you're not going to walk in it. But that's why here at Ascension Life, we're going to focus on these things, and God wants that to be the case. That's the whole purpose of the Great Commission is to go out and to preach the gospel. What does the word gospel mean? It means good news. Our ministry, our job is to preach the good news. And yes, it's the good news of Jesus Christ, but guess what else it is? Paul says it's the good news of grace. And you know what? If you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're preaching the gospel of grace and vice versa. And vice versa. So, you know, as we go into 2024, yes, we're going, to, we're going to focus on the goodness of God. We're going to focus on the blessings of God. Because, hey, our God is a good God. Amen. And not only does he want to bless us, and that's each and every one of us. Listen, he wants to bless us. He wants to lavish his love upon us. I mean, he wants to smother us with his love. But, you know... <laughs> And it breaks my heart when I see how the church reacts to the goodness of God and, and, and to grace and this and that. You know, typically the way that most people preach it, and sadly speaking, I used to do it the same way about 15 plus years ago, is that, you know, we make the grace of God, we make the goodness of God, we make the blessings of God and the promises of God something that you have to earn. Now think about this. We just, we just got through Christmas. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's. I did. I got, I got to spend Christmas with my family, and that's all my kids and my grandkids. Then I got to spend New Year's with all my kids and my grandkids, and that includes my son-in-law and my daughter-in-law. Hey, come on now. I'm blessed. I got the best. I got the best, okay? And I will put them up against anybody. Anybody want to debate this morning? I've got the best. But you know, how many of us here, okay, I'm going to speak to the fathers right now. And, it, you know, and I guess I could speak to the mothers as well. But how many of us here, when it, we're talking about Christmas, that we're going to sit here and go, well, you know, Junior did this and, you know, and, and, and the other one did that. You know, I'm going to, this one did great. So he's going to get or she's going to get this present. But the other one didn't do so good this year. So they're just going to get a lesser present. Who puts that into practice here? Nobody. I can promise you this. When Julie and I go out shopping, actually when she goes shopping, <laughs> I just write the check. When she goes shopping, she doesn't play that game. In fact, I am so blessed that I have a wife who, who, who has that mindset of just lavishing our love on the kids and the grandkids. And man, did we do it. I mean, we went overboard. And I know I heard people saying, well, yeah, well, you're going to spend all that money and then you're going to go into debt for 2024. Hey, God works it out. Amen. We've done it every year for 30 years. God's worked it out. Because when you give, it's given back. And it's not just limited to tithes and offerings. When you give, it's given back. The church in 2024, we got to learn how to be givers instead of takers. And it's okay to be a taker in the right situation and to be able to receive. I would rather use the word receiver because we're going to talk about that as we get into 2024. But we got to be givers. And, you know, none of us as parents, that, like, for example, Christmas, we don't go shop and say, well, you know what, uh, Cooper, gets, Cooper gets this present because Cooper did this, but, you know, Ace is not going to get this because he didn't do that. We don't do that as parents, do we? And grandparents either. We just bless them. Because you know what? There's nothing like watching our kids and our grandkids open presents at Christmas and seeing the looks on their faces. And you know what? And that's the joy. That's the pleasure that the Father has is that when we are able to realize what he has for us, the good things he has in store for us, and that when we realize that, and how do we realize that? By the preaching of the gospel. That's why it's important to preach the gospel of grace because it's the gospel of grace that makes it real to us how good God is and, you know, and what he has for us. And then when we step out in faith, and that's what faith is all about, to understand what it is and then to, to be able to appropriate, to access, appropriate, and receive. And when we're able to do that, then all of a sudden, man, the joy of the Lord just breaks out 
and we've got the joy of the Lord. And I mean, and God love, He loves that. He loves that. He's a good, good father. He's a good daddy. Come on now. I don't care what the preacher down the road preaches. He's a good, good father. He's a good daddy. He's been good to me. He's always been good to me. In every situation, he's been good to me. I don't care what it was. And he's been good to you. And if you don't believe that, then you believe the lie. God wants to bless his children. He wants to bless his children. And not only does he want to bless his children, he wants to bless us so that we can bless others. No, don't get me wrong. He wants to bless us. <laughs> he's not putting a stipulation on that. But you know what? <laughs> if we really want to add to that and really make it good is when we learn that how, when we know how blessed we are and how good we are with God, then we can go out there and we can be a blessing to others. We are his workmanship. Created for good works. And that's what the good works is all about. It's not about earning something from God. It's about representing God and blessing everyone around us to show them how good God is. That's who we are, to show the world how good God is. Right now, the church needs to know because a lie has been brought forth in the church of how bad God is, of how ugly God is, of how mean God is, how angry God is. No, 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 no. Church, you need to know that he loves you with a never-ending love. His love is, you know, Paul even said it this way, to know the height, the width, the length, and the depth because there is no end to it. <laughs> There's no end to it. That's how much he loves us. So he's blessed us to be a blessing. And then when we're a blessing to others, guess what? God gets the glory. God gets the glory. God gets the glory. And so before I get any more into to 2024 and focusing on some really good stuff here, I need to revisit 2023 just for a little bit, just for a little bit, because I want to, you know, I, 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 I want to I, I shut the door on 2023. In fact, I want to slam the door on 2023. Mm. But here's the thing, you know, probably what a lot of us don't know, especially in light of the latter part of 2023, 2023 as a whole for Ascension Life Church was a great year. It was. So I'm not going to go into 2024 without celebrating the good, without highlighting the good, but you know something else? I'm not going to sweep the other stuff under the rug either because Paul says this, that in all things, everybody say all things, all then in all things we give thanks. One version says in all circumstances we give thanks. And so whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly, we don't just celebrate the good. We have to rejoice in the good, the bad, and the ugly. And why? Because Paul goes on to say, and we know. Somebody say, and we know. We know this, that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And we know. You know what? Most of us don't. You know why? Because we don't live it out. Maybe we do know, but we sure don't put it into practice. That's maybe a better way to put it. But if we truly understood how good God is and that when we are going through not just the good but the bad and the ugly, that God is in the midst of that and he's working it for us in our favor. All things, church, all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, he's working all things together for our good. And you know why? Not because we earned it, not because we deserve it. He does it simply because he loves us. I know we got a room full of parents here and grandparents. That's the same way we treat our children. 
or we should be treating our children. I'm purposed to do everything I possibly can to do good for my children. But guess what? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And I drop the ball a lot. And I miss it a lot. But you know what? He doesn't. Because our God is perfect. He doesn't drop the ball. He doesn't miss it. He doesn't make mistakes. And so it doesn't matter what we're going through. He's there with us. And you know, look, there's nothing in the scripture that says that God promised us a tiptoeing through the tulips. That's not what I'm talking about when I preach grace. Because my Bible says we enter the kingdom through great adversity and tribulation. And so, you know what? The greater the adversity, the greater the glory. The greater the battle, the greater the victory. But the only way we can get through that, that we can get through the adversity, get through these battles we experience in life, is knowing that, hey, God's not against us. He's for us. That God is on, he's working on our behalf, helping us, get, helping us to get through it. So when we do mess up, when we do make mistakes, God doesn't turn his back on us. He does not turn his back on us like so many preach it. Jesus himself said, and the writer of Hebrews solidifies this. Jesus said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He will not. He, the devil preaches that, but that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. He will not forsake us. He doesn't leave us, you know, out there, you know, and guess what else he does? He's not the author of the storm either. Now, I know we, we might read some things in the Old Testament that alludes to that, but we're not under the old covenant law anymore. We're under the new covenant of grace. And under the new covenant of grace, God is working for us, not against us. Always working for us and not against us. And so when we look at 2023, you know what? Real quick, I, wanna, I, 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 don't, I don't want us to go into 2024 missing this. In 2023, church, 2023 as a whole was a really good month. There's not just two or three months in a year. Yeah, we had a few bad months. But the year overall was great. We came into 2023 having purchased that property down there at the bottom of the hill. And then we cleared that property. Listen, that was a lot, a lot of money. But did you know this? That we didn't go in debt for that? Not even one penny. Now hang with me. We didn't go into debt at all. In fact, I'm going back, and God was reminding me of this this morning. You know, we spent several years trying to find who owned that property, and we couldn't find, we, man, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't locate these individuals. But then all of a sudden, doors began to open, things began to happen, and hey, I'm sitting down with these two guys who've owned that property for over 50 years, and you know what? They want to sell it. And we're like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, like, I got to get my faith up in 2024. There's been a number of things this year where I've kind of like, <laughs> I need some tweaking. That's why God put Tim in my life. <laughs> when it comes to faith, and that's why he put him in this church, to help tweak our faith or our believing. And by the way, on Monday nights, Linda's going to be teaching on believing, on right believing. <laughs> and guess what? Hey, everybody, Linda and Jerry's back. The Millers are back. And that's another issue with the church. See, we've been too focused on right doing when it's supposed to be, our focus is supposed to be on right believing. And if our right believing is right, then the doing will happen automatically in time and in God's good timing. And, and as we mature, you know, you don't, make, you don't beat a two-year-old with a two-by-four because they're not doing what you want them to do. <laughs> Somebody's going. <laughs> no. The focus, see, the ch we, as a church, we've been focused on right doing too long. Amen. No. Our focus is supposed to be on right believing. And when the believing is right, the doing will begin to come naturally. Amen. 
And so, you know, so looking at this, I'm sitting down with these two individuals, and, you know, I'm ready for them to say, you know, look, you're going to have to come up with about a quarter, quarter or maybe even more than that, a million dollars. No. In fact, they didn't even start the conversation off with money. One of the w- w- precious two men, and, and, and one of them, he says, he says I, let's, let's don't talk about money right now. He says, I want to know about your marriage. He said, I want to know about your kids. You got kids? Well, you know, if you ask me about my marriage and my kids, you better watch out. We're going to be sitting here for a long, long time. I got the best wife in the world. I got the best kids in the world. Oh, let me tell you about my grandkids. He asked me about my faith. He asked me about this church, what we believed. And I didn't hold back. I was a little concerned because I I felt that he had a little bit of Baptist in him. (laughs) And God gave me wisdom right there. So I knew that, because see, we're a little bit Baptist. We're a little bit Pentecostal. We're, you know, you know. And I'm like, I'm like, well, hey, man, we're all about Jesus. We're all about Jesus. We're all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And he's amen, amen, amen. You know, and I said, well, you know, uh, and, and hey, you know, yeah, we're a little Pentecostal, but we're also a little Baptist. <laughs> you know why I say that? Because as, when it comes to the blood of Jesus, they got it. When it comes to, you know, salvation, they got it. When it comes to the cross, they got it. And for those of us who are in the Pentecostal camp, we can learn a lot from that because I think we've gotten, we've strayed too far away from that. Next thing I know, he says, well, this is what I want to, he said, this is what we want to do because God spoke to me and said that whoever I'm going to sell this to, they're going to have to put a church on it. (laughs) He says, well, you know, I'm old. And he, he was older. He says, I'm old, and this is going to be my legacy. Church, I go down to that property about once a week, typically because I'm going down to throw something into the dumpster. But I want you to understand something. When I pull into that piece of property, I'm dreaming with God. See, the devil hadn't stole me of my dreams. The devil didn't give them to me, and he can't take them away. When I pull in, I see this big, nice sign that's, you know, electronic sign. Got all the video going on. It shows the worship team going to town. I mean, all 24 hours a day. It shows, you know, updates, you know, and what we're doing and this and that. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Looks like you're in a big city or something, and it's just... See, I, I see that, and then I'm pulling in, and guess what I'm pulling in on? Not gravel. It's paved, and it's nicely paved. And then all these, you know, parking spaces, and I see myself pulling into one. Then I see myself walking into the church. I encourage you to go down there, pull in, and just get out of your car and stand there and and, and dream with God and vision. And I'm telling you, it's a big church. It's a big, big, big church. See, Trump and I got some things in common. It's a big, 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 big church. Now, if you're offended by that, I'm sorry. I'm just having some fun, okay? <laughs> Don't be offended because I mentioned the name Trump. But it is. It's, I see a big, big, big. <laughs> and then I see myself walking in, and I see windows, you know, and, and the whole inside is lit up. And I come in, and I look, and I look over, and I see a coffee lounge, a really nice coffee lounge. And you know who I, sit, who I see sitting in that coffee lounge? I see Nicole. And she's got her computer laid out, and she's doing her thing, but she's talking with people. Uh, yeah. Well, girl, you got to call it forth. No kidding, but... I see her sitting there, and she's talking with people, and she's got the biggest old smile, and you know what? She's got a gift. It's called the gift of encouragement, and when she speaks, it lifts you up. It doesn't pull you down. Can I tell you something for 2024? Run far, far away from people who pull you down all the time. We don't have time for that. 
because the devil will put people in your path that all they want to do is vomit on you and pull you down. Am I right? Because if you keep tolerating that, you'll be doing the same thing because birds of a feather flock together. I don't want to be a part of that flock. But she speaks life, and she, when she speaks, she lifts you up. That's why, hey, my family has gravitated towards her because she speaks life. She never speaks bad about anybody. You know, she's always giggly and laughing, and you know what? And laughter is a medicine, and it's contagious. The church has got to learn to laugh in 2024. I think I'm going to lay hands on everybody. We're going we're to get her to lay hands on us. We're going to laugh. And I see that. I walk into the sanctuary and I see, hey, a, a nice big sanctuary with theater top seats at an angle. And then I see a stage, a beautiful stage with a, I mean, the whole back wall is covered with that. But not that small. The whole back wall. And it's just going constant. You know, it's like the band just, I mean, just killing it. Didn't they do a great job this morning? They did. I mean, my goodness, that last song, I was bawling over here. Everything is possible. Yes, it is. Everything is possible. Church, God is saying this year, everything's possible. Everything's possible. Everything's possible. Believe in 2024. I don't care what you see in the natural, what's going on in the world around you. And by the way, here's another word. Here's some more word. Here's, here's a timely word of wisdom. You know what? What you focus on is going to have an effect on you. You want to sit and watch the bad news every day and get caught up in the gloom and the doom, then that's the life you'll live. You'll live in the mully grubs. But if you, get, if you feast on the joy of the Lord, that's, by the way, that's first, uh, it's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, which is in the Passion Translation. Paul says, if you feast on the joy of the Lord, man, it's going to change your life. I'm going to feast on the joy of the Lord. I'm going to feast on the joy of the Lord. So anyway, hey, so... That property's not going anywhere. That church is going to be there one of these days. It's going to be there. And then we won't have to complain about the gravel anymore, Julie. I mean, uh. <laughs> She's in my shoes. You know what? Let's be thankful for the gravel. Because if you know how many times we put gravel on there, John knows, and how much that's cost. We probably could have built a building for that because <laughs> it's about $400 a load. Anyway, that's a thumbs up. Hey, we had our second year of the School of Ministry. We had another graduation group, not as big as the year before because we lost several throughout the year. But you know what? I'm sure it's going to build up. It's going to build up. We got great things going on Mondays and Wednesdays. Hey, church, okay, here's the announcement because we hear it all year long. It's for everybody. Mondays and Wednesday nights are for everybody. Come and learn. You know what? And if you want to go the, the degree track, then that's right. Do the work. But if you want to just come and learn, please come and learn. Because Linda's teaching on Mondays and Tim and I are teaching on Wednesdays. And we got some great stuff that we're doing in that. And this year, November, we will graduate the largest class we ever had. Because this year, we graduate our first Bachelor's of Applied Ministry degree class. In fact, if you're part of that, I want you right now to stand up in the church right now. If you're part of the, if this is going to be the year you get your third year, stand up right now. Well, there's a lot more than that. I don't know. People aren't standing, though. There's a lot more than that. All right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And guess what else? In the same year this last year, we entered into a formal partnership with Regent University. And in that formal partnership, if you make it through your first year of our school of ministry, you can get a 
20% tuition-based scholarship to go to Regent. And Regent is not some school. I mean, it is a really, really good university. They've got, Regent has a couple of Supreme Court justices that teach there. They have a couple of retired senators that teach there. One, reti- one governor, who, person who used to be a governor. Hey, listen, you're truly graduated from there. It's a great school. Their law group, their law class defeated Harvard two years in a row in the nationals. Jay Sekulow came out of. That is an excellent, excellent school. We're in partnership with them. And if you're in ministry here, you can qualify for a church match grant that can push you up to almost a 35 to 40% tuition-based scholarship. Take advantage of it, church. Take advantage of it. You know what else? Another group we entered into into partnership with or in a, a formal fellowship with, Andrew Womack Ministries. We now have that prayer covering over us, and we're on their website. And when people are looking for more of Andrew Womack in this area because they don't want to drive all the way out or fly all the way out to Colorado, they've got us. Not only are we in relationship with them, we are now with Joseph Prince, with Dudley Hall, Kerygma Ministries. Wow, powerful, powerful. God's doing great things at Ascension Life, and there's more, more, more. Now, did we hit a bump in the road in 2023? We did. We hit a bump in the road, and it <laughs> threw us into the ditch for a while. But you know what? We got out of it. We got out of it. Other than my son's car accident and what Julie and I had to experience and go through when that happened, the hardest day of my life was that Sunday, Sunday the 10th, September the 10th, that I stood in this pulpit and had to make the announcement that our associate pastor uh, was resigning. Our associate pastor, Brian Miller, whom we still love dearly. And let me tell you something. He's doing great. You know what? He entered himself into rehab, went through 12 weeks of rehab. Several of us here, and God bless you, visited him a number of times. And I want you to know that when he graduated, the day that he graduated, which was a couple of weeks ago, right, right after, just right after Christmas, I was there. Keith Eric was there. We were there with Jerry and Linda and with Stephen. And I want you to know My goodness, that was a great speech he gave. But here's what blew me away. But I'm I'm not, I shouldn't, we shouldn't be surprised. There's about 30 men in that place. And there was a speaker there that says, if if Brian ministered to you and helped you during this last 12 weeks and made a difference in your life, I want you to stand up. Church, the whole place stood up. (laughs) The whole place stood up. God will use anybody at any time. He doesn't use the perfect. He uses the imperfect. He don't. (laughs) You got to get this. The church has got to break out of this thing that we're supposed to be the perfect of the perfect of the perfect. It's like we have this mentality that you got to climb this mountain of perfection. Can I tell you this? The day that you get saved, God declares you perfect, blameless, and holy. Ain't nobody perfect here. And there's a perfect example. This is what's perfect, the perfect example that, that he changed. I mean, he, he had a, that God used him to, to have a powerful impact on each one of those men that were there. And you could see it. It was not, <laughs> that was not something that was fake, something that was a show. Those men cried. They were crying. And then it's true. Every time I went, when Keith and I would go, he'd be sitting there ministering to someone and the guy would be in tears. That's how anointed he is. He made a mistake, but he's worked. God's bringing him through it. But here's the craziness. Here's what happened. The day that I made that announcement, this is how, this is how the church reacts. And we've got to get over this stuff. You know, in a rehab facility, when someone goes and messes up and comes back, in a rehab facility, do you know they welcome them with open arms? 
You know why? See, they don't sit there and go, oh, darn it. Why'd you mess up? They welcome them back and saying, I'm so glad you're here and that you're still out there messing up. You know what? The church does the opposite. Somebody leaves the church, gets caught up in stuff they shouldn't get caught in, and then they come back and everybody stares at them. What did they do? I bet they haven't stopped yet. We don't welcome them because, see, we're too good. That's got to change. Jesus didn't act like that. Jesus didn't act like that. God help us. God help us. But here's what's crazy. The day I made that announcement, we had a family hadn't been here two weeks. I can't, don't even know their names. As they left, they told an usher, we'll never come back to this church. I'm just giving you the... So you'll know what Julie and I and the elders and what we had to deal with. And go tell the pastor that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Within the next two or three weeks, I had people... You know what? It's like I couldn't win for losing. I either was too soft or I was too hard. No kidding. I was either too soft or I was too hard on him. I'd have people come up to me on a Sunday morning and say, hey, you better be doing him right. I'm like, you're kidding me. And I'd have to explain, and I'd say, look, man, we're helping. We're here. We're standing with Brian. We, we are him. I mean, we are here for him. We're here. And then, of course, the people who were like, oh, you didn't say enough. You didn't do enough. You, you, you. The vultures all came out. It was crazy. And then on top of that, all of a sudden, people who have been here, been here for several years began to make known to me and others, we don't like the grace message. We don't like the grace message. You're preaching it too much. You're preaching it too hard. You know, and, and, and because that's what you've been preaching, that's, what ha- that's why this happened. That's not the, that's, <laughs> church, my Bible says it's the goodness of God that turns people to repentance. And they were going through the church and then, you know, and here, the holier than thou that people, you know, you know, we're perfect, we're perfect. Guess what they weren't being perfect in? Where Paul says you're not to go throughout the church sowing seeds of discord and division. But God forbid, I mean, it was happening. But you know what? And a lot of people left. Listen to me. Don't let someone poison you in 2024 with bad news and... and If someone starts talking to you about people in the church, whether it's the pastor, the elders, someone sitting in the congregation, and they start speaking negative things, you know what? I would, this is my word to you, my words of, of, of advice. Stop them right there. And if, and if there's a question, go to that person. Isn't that what the Bible says to do? If you got aught with someone, if you have an issue with someone, the Bible says you go to them personally, but you don't get a coup over here and have this little. So that being the case, pastor, what do we do now? I mean, how do we do? Because we know that there's still some stuff going on. And you know, that's look, hey, church, guess what? This isn't my first rodeo. So what we have to do is we have to put the biblical principles and teaching into practice. And I'll, and I'll be the first to say, did I handle all of this perfect? No, I didn't. And if I could go back and take back some reactions, the way that I reacted to some of the situations and some of the things I said, I'd do it in a heartbeat because I'm human. If you're looking for the perfect pastor, you're at the wrong church. If you're looking for the perfect church, you're at the wrong church. And I'm just being serious. You know? And I mean, come on, I'm ex-military. I mean, you know, if you're looking for that feeble, really wimpy kind of soft-spoken, bless you, my child, you're in the wrong place. I grew up with that. I know what that's exactly like. 
But I can tell you this, I think that Paul the Apostle and I have a lot of things in common. But here's the deal. This is going into 2024, church, listen to me. I don't care who it is, what they've said, what they've done. Our mandate is to bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and do good to them that do you wrong. Okay? Starting today. Starting today. Now, don't get me wrong. Paul said to also mark, though. <laughs> what does that mean? That means, that means if that person has bit you in the past, then you need to be careful. You know, listen, forgiveness is instantaneous, and it should be, and I know most of us don't. I mean, we, we all struggle with walking in forgiveness and forgiving people, but trust has to be earned. Forgiveness is something that we should do instantaneously, and that's for our own good and theirs, truly. But trust has to be earned. Trust has to be earned. So we'll bless those who curse us, we'll do good to those who do us wrong, and we'll pray for them that despitefully use us. Amen? Amen, amen. And so, you know what? Hey, so September... October, November, tough. Lots of people left. I spent hours on the phone with people. I spent hours in my office with people. It was tough. Julie and I, there was a lot of nights we didn't get a lot of sleep. But I will tell you this, that through all of that, and there's tears, yes, and there were times we cried for sure. But through all of that, I can tell you this. God gave me a supernatural peace through it all. He gave me a supernatural peace. And even though at times I'm like, that they left too? And I'm like, my goodness, my goodness. I mean, what, you know, the devil tried to get me in that mode of, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I didn't, but I had plenty of people coming to me. Pastor, what are we going to do? They left too? I mean, it's like that's what was in my head all the time. Pastor, 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 what are we going to do? They left too. Pastor, 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 what are we going to do? They left too. And then I would just say, God's got it. We don't respond in the flesh. And we don't do things in the flesh to make up. We stay in the spirit. And I know some of us here have been in other situations very similar. And I, gosh, my heart goes out to them. But we move on into 2024. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind, Philippians 3, verse 13, and reaching forward. Church, we went into December, and guess what? We had one of the best Decembers we've ever had. The church, we were able to rent the barn at Faith Farms and have a wonderful Ascension Life family Christmas dinner. Come on. You didn't pay for that. You didn't have to give a $5 cover charge. The church provided the catering. You didn't have to pay for that. I mean, a lot of things you would go to, you'd be about a $10 charge per person, if not more. You were able to come and enjoy the goodness of God because God's good. And it was a great night. Tim Hughes Quartet playing us all the wonderful jazzy Christmas tunes. And then did anybody see him that one moment of the night, he's playing his trumpet one-handed and he's holding my, ba my little uh, baby back. And did you see her go to sleep? Well, when he plays, he puts me to sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Gotcha. No, he doesn't. He's an awesome, fabulous trumpet player. I love it. I love it. Come on. Church, we had one of the best Christmas story and the songs we've I had so many people come and say, that's the best yet. The best yet. And with a skeleton crew. If one person had gotten sick that week, we'd have been in trouble. But you know what? We had it covered. I mean, when you got Linda Miller praying, it's covered. <laughs> She's an army of one. The army, the United States Army stole that, sl <laughs> sang that slogan from her. And then the Sunday after that, yes, she does, absolutely. We have a wonderful prayer team. And then, and then the next Sunday, we, we introduce something new, Christmas at Ascension Life, and that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Woo! But we, 
But we got to experience Christmas here that morning as a family before we went into, you know, the Christmas Eve night. And, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Church, last thing I'll say about 2023. Before September, when everything hit, our finances were really good. Would you believe that we came into December and even to now with a 6% increase? I had to go and do my numbers yesterday just to make sure I was right. Because I, and I had to go back and look, I had to go look at my records and my, you know, uh, to see where we, were, where we were in August and where we are now. And guys, God, listen, God is good. And there were some here that said, hey, you know, this is, this is how God works. It's like, it's like I believe that some of you actually began to say, look, I'm going to give more because I'm going to listen to Tim's teaching because I know it works. And it works. Look, we couldn't do what we do if it wasn't for those who are committed to giving here at Ascension Life. I mean, we're all about salaries here. Look, we got a number of people on salary here. Do you know we reward our worship team Sunday after Sunday after Sunday? We got so much going on. I mean, look, did you know that we have to pay for licensing to do the overhead and to go live streaming? Did you know we have to, did you know we have to pay for licensing just to do the songs we do? There are, there, I'm telling you, church today, expenses are uh, immense. But guess what? When it's God's vision, there's provision. When it's God's vision, there's provision. And God, at the 22 years that Julie and I, going on 23 that we've been doing this, when we've gone through those seasons where we had some great adversity, like I said, this wasn't my first rodeo. It wasn't our first rodeo. But every time God provided. And there's days I can go just sit and cry and just thank the Lord. I can thank him for he's good. And his mercy endures forever. He keeps his word. I want to end with this. I want to read three passages of Scripture that are going to be important to this church in 2024. Here it is. The first, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. The first is Acts 20, 24. And Paul says this, But whether I live or die is not important, for I don't esteem my life as indispensable. It's more important for me to fulfill my destiny and to finish the ministry my Lord Jesus has assigned to me, which is, here it is, to faithfully preach the wonderful news of God's grace. Amen. To faithfully preach the wonderful news of God's grace. Besides Jesus, Paul is the most significant character in the New Testament. No one else is as significant as Paul. My goodness, if you look at the volumes of books that he wrote, he wrote more than half the New Testament. It was Paul who established all the New Testament churches. And this was his mission assignment. If it's his, it's ours. To preach the wonderful news of God's grace. Let's go to the second one. Romans 1, 16 and 17. And again, I'm looking at the Passion Translation. You know why I like the Passion Translation? And it's a paraphrase, okay? But it emphasizes the goodness of God. It emphasizes the love of God, and I love that. But look at this. Again, Paul the Apostle, I refuse to be ashamed of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. Hallelujah. For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved. How many of you are saved this morning? Thank you, Jesus. To the Jew first and then to people everywhere. Our message, our preaching, our witness, our testimony is to everyone, especially those who aren't in church and living for God. It's like, man, this is what's upsetting to me. It's like the church has set itself up as that it's us against the world. And I know I used to be in that camp because I was holier than thou. It's not us against the world. It's us to save the world. You know, it's us to save the world. And then check this out. This gospel, everybody say gospel, gospel. unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. How many believers we got here this morning? 
Now look what Paul just said. It's a perfect righteousness. It's not a halfway righteousness that when you believe God gave us a perfect righteousness. It's called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How many of you this morning can say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Come on now. See, if you struggle with that and don't know that, you're missing out, but you're going to learn that in 2024. Because what the devil will say, no, you're not the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because you just had that sinful thought or you just did that really bad, bad, bad thing this week. Look, we don't condone sin, and grace is not a license to sin, but it does not change your status with God. If you believe that, the devil is going to have his way with you each and every day. You know, when my kids mess up, it doesn't change their status with me. They're still my flesh and blood. And see, we've been born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. And because of that spiritual regeneration, our actions don't change that. It can't be undone. And it says, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. And it moves us from receiving life through faith. There's the faith emphasis to the power of living by faith. This is what the scriptures mean when it says, we are right with God through life-giving faith. How many of you got faith this morning? We go focus on that a lot in 2024. And the last one, Matthew 11, 28. Now, this is in the Message Bible. This is the Jesus we preach. I saw a post this morning by a fellow, by a person down the road, a pastor down the road, and I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm not at that church this morning. Because these people are going to show up and get beat. Our job is not to beat the sheep. Our job is to feed the sheep. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. And you, This is Jesus speaking. And you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Right now, the first Sunday of the year in churches are laying very heavy burdens right now. You got to fast for so many days. You got to do this for so many days. You better be doing that. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely. And lightly, let me get you to stand.